right there you see where it says uptown cool city chic that is the building that Elvis lived in right there so next time you drive through here you're about to pass this bridge look right there and then you see the pyramid to the right and we're about to go over it to Arkansas we're about to be in Arkansas anymore Dorothy I don't think that's how the saying goes and there is the mighty Mississippi So friends, we are in Arkansas and we are just about to our destination. It is coming up, I believe, where this store is up here on the left. And we're going to be making a left turn. And we're going to be meeting somebody here that has an interesting story. This is not a fully Elvis related story, but very, very close to it. This is a Scotty Moore story which was Elvis's first manager, first guitar player. The guitar player on all of the Sun recordings. The one that actually made the phone call and invited Elvis to his house to uh, audition. And then the very next night recorded That's All Right Mama. That guy. And this gentleman that lives here has an incredible story to tell about that. Stay tuned. So friends, a lot of you know that I was in business with Scotty Moore. This is Scotty. Some of you may not know who Scotty is. He was Elvis's first manager, the first guitar player. He's the guy that actually called uh, Elvis when Sam Phillips asked him to and got him to come over to his house to audition. So he is critical in this story. If it wasn't for Scotty, you may not know Elvis. This is at Scotty's home about three months before he passed away, and this is John and Leanne. We've got a story with John and Leanne right here. And this is another angle. I've actually sat in this house at this table with Scotty many times and you can see the glass uh, beside him where you have all the bottles and stuff sitting. That looks out into the side yard on the left hand side. But that is Scotty right there. And unfortunately he's passed away. But you know what? Sometimes people leave things that uh, tell a little story about them that they didn't even know uh, existed and that is actually Scotty looking it's in his hands right there at what we're going to talk about so John and Leanne how are y'all good doing good we'll back up a little bit so I can get you in the frame okay so where you where did you grow up where, where are you from born and raised in West Memphis Arkansas okay your mom was from where Gadsden Tennessee okay who else was from Gadsden, Tennessee? Scotty Moore. That's exactly right. So he went, his his real name is Winfield. Winfield Scott Moore. That's right. So in the old days, he went by Winfield. A lot of people don't know it. Absolutely. In the Elvis days, he went by Scotty. Right. So how do we know he went by Winfield? Well, um, by his uh, military service uh, and letters that he wrote, personal letters that he wrote my mother. Who? My mother, that's right. He wrote, that's right. He wrote pers personal love letters uh, during his uh, military days from, I think it was 1948 through 1950, uh, while he was in the Navy. And he uh, signed them Winfield. All right, let's see one of them. Okay. Let's see a good one here. There's that one right there. So it actually says uh, W.S. Moore right there, but uh, in, inside on the letter it says Winfield. So we'll, yes. we'll show that in a moment, but we're going to do that in a different cut. Okay. Friends, we don't want to give away the, what the letters look like and that kind of stuff, but we'll read some things from, you, from it. And there's a photograph. We're not going to show it as well. But it says what on the photograph? It says Love Winfield. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Scotty Moore wearing a Navy suit. Absolutely. Um, uh, which is, is pretty incredible. So how did Scotty know your mom? Um, they grew up together uh, in Gadsden. They often uh, double dated um, while they were growing up as teenagers. Uh, they went 
you know, when he went into the military, they kind of went their separate ways. But from the stories I got from my mother, they um, double dated uh, several times, and they always kept in touch even after later in life. Um, I remember as a teenager, um, you know, mom talking to Scotty on the on the phone, you know, a couple times a year. So they stay in, they stayed in touch, um, you know, the rest of their life. So, um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, they, they, uh, they went out a few times, you know, during their teenage years. So, but he, Scotty was apparently in love with your mom. Well, uh, apparently from the letters. He, he was, <laughs> he was, he was so very, let's, let's look at your mom. This yeah. is a photograph of her. And I'll do a better photograph, friends. I'll superimpose it on the thing, but this was her. Now, when did your uh, mom pass? She passed in 1998. Okay. And Scotty passed in 2016. 2016. Right. Okay. Yes. So, um, so let's pop a letter out and let's let's hear what what the Lovebird. Okay. Winfield What's had to one? say to Lo mom. The Lovebird Winfield. Okay. Yep. Let's see here. Yeah. When I say Lovebird, friends, you're not going to believe this. Let's see it? here. The one to the uh, that one right there. Yeah, Let's go with that one. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. This is dated September the 25th, 1949, um, in Adak, Alaska. And it's on a United States Navy letterhead. Okay. Um, and, and so he was in Alaska. Some of these letters, yes. friends, are in Alaska. Some of these letters are in California. Yes. Um, I don't know how much you want me to read of it, but... Uh, Give it, us some mush. Okay, it says, well, um, starts out, Darling Doris, here we are back in ADAC again. That trip was really short. It only took a couple of hours to drop our load. We were only about 50 miles to sea. It really was rough. It was all I could do to stand up in the engine room. Tomorrow Which is means he worked in the engine room, mm -hmm. so there's a clue. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is another working day, but I don't think, I don't think uh, going to work, I don't, I don't think I'm going to work. I don't like going to work very much. I think that's what <laughs> he goes. Just lazy, I guess. Everyone's that way sometimes. I went to bed as soon as I got off watch this morning and slept until 1800 hours. So he was on watch and in the engine room. This was this was this is afternoon. Such something I did have. I can't understand. Well, I don't know what word that is. It's cursive writing. So yeah, it's cursive writing. Of course they they um of course they were of you. Oh oh such dreams I did have. That's what it says. Such dreams I did have. Of course they were of you. Aha, uh -huh, there's a uh -huh. the bus. Yeah. You're the only one on my mind. <laughs> Scotty you yeah, dog. Yes. <laughs> Uh, he ain't nothing but a hound dog, Scotty. <laughs> uh, we had a good movie to watch tonight. The only trouble was that I had seen it twice before. I suppose you've seen it also. It's called A Date with Judy. A Date with Judy. Right now, I'm really lonely because there's so there's no music on the radio. Sun, um, something uh, being Sunday, they they all go off the air early anyway, and I don't read music. I don't need music to tell you that I love you. Wow! <laughs> so we're just starting to get the musical get, reference. Get, That's get, good. Yeah, I bet you are. I bet you're wondering what on earth has gotten into me, haven't you? I. Something me writing very every day these last few days. Oh, um, since wanting that myself, I'm wanting that myself. All I know is that 
all through the day, I keep longing for the night to... Oh, oh that's a long letter. Oh. Yeah. To come so I can write you um, some as if... I can't mark that out what it says. Um, so uh, I want to feel close to you when I'm writing. I haven't heard from you in a, in a in a while, or a week or so, hoping to receive a letter real soon. I, I noticed that in a lot of the letters, he would ask, "When are you sending a letter?" Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I would say he was he's really lonely. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. He's lonely out there, John. Mm -hmm. um, remember how I used to sit behind you in study hall and worry you? Oh, wow. So we're getting yeah, some real insight. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got to keep uh, on going. I did worry you, didn't I? Then you were just another pretty girl to see. But after I was away from you, you became the only pretty girl. I'm sure you were always, I'm sure you were always be. How I used to love working in the library, especially the last period when I could watch the girls practice ball. <laughs> Seems like everyone always wanted to check out a book that hour and Miss Cox she was a very sweet teacher so he worked in the library so he's really revealed some things here I pity she had to get married she broke my heart just kidding my darling <laughs> um, is Junior still going with his darling can't make up what her name is. He used to tell me that everyone thought he was very funny for having a girl so young when there were other ones that were always after him. I'm saying this for a fact. It's not the age, it's just what your heart tells you. Well, my darling, I may go to bed and get some sleep. Don't forget about that picture Good night, that good night from a lover far away. So he's asking her for a picture, I think. So did he send the picture in there? You've got a PS there. Well, yeah, what's he? he I, I don't know if it's. I think he's asking her for a picture. Uh, well, my darling, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. Don't forget about that picture. Oh, I think you're right. I, I, can't, I can't make out what he says there. Full, oh, full length. Uh -huh. Aha! Oh. Easy, Scott. Full yeah. length picture. Easy, Winfield. Yeah. Good night from a lover far away. Oh. With all my love, Winfield. P.S. Tell all the family hello. Tell them they are lucky to have such a wonderful daughter. Very cool. So who is Junior? Junior, I forget. He was a guy, uh, another fellow from Gadsden that... But he wasn't Ken. No, he's the one they double dated with. Oh, okay. they, they would double date my mom and Scotty and Junior and another girl. They would double date. Oh. Yeah, Junior. I forget his name, Junior. You want to read these little flaps? Just what he wrote. Oh, oh, on the flap? Just in the little flaps because I think they're so sweet. Uh, let's see if I can read this. Uh, so they would write inside of, he would write inside of the flaps. Yes, mm -hmm. he would write inside the, like the a, envelope. Like a last minute thing, like yeah. a last minute yeah. plea. Yeah. Yes. All right, tell, tell us what they say. Yeah, this, right one, this one right here. That's the one. That's this it. is the one. This right is the here. one inside. Check this out. He, it says, your hand in marriage would be more precious than all the gold and jewels in the world. So he asked for her hand in marriage inside this envelope. Yeah. Right. Right here. You look at that right there, friends. Let me see if I can get the light right. And ladies and gentlemen, I know Scotty Moore. I worked with Scotty Moore for several years. This is beyond a shadow of a doubt his writing. I recognize his handwriting. I sure do. This one here. And this one is 19. Uh, let's see, out of Washington, September 20. I can't make out the year on this one. Can you? Let's see. I cannot. Let me see if I can. I cannot. I don't have to see a date on that one. Um, so this, make sure that the letters that are in each one yeah, don't get mixed, mixed up. up. Right. Yeah, right. That's with that one. Yeah. No. Yeah, this goes with this one. This, it just says September. Is there a date there? 
in the letter that was in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he always dated. Uh, September the 25th, 1949. So, 1949, he asked for your mom's hand in marriage. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty you good. Could, you could be uh, 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 John Moore. I could That's be. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I could be. So, you have 11 letters. Yes. And something else we noticed, friends, is look, the, the airmail stamp is upside down. And some of them is right side up, but the vast majority of them it's upside down. That one's right side up. Mm -hmm. Upside down. Upside down. This is one up. This is right. Side this one's down. upside down. A whole lot of them are. Yeah, this one. But you can see Gadsden, Tennessee, Miss Doris Blurton, <laughs> Box 93, Gadsden, Tennessee. No zip code at that time. And my microphone is getting in the way of the light. Thanks a lot, microphone. I think that now this one actually says Winfield S. Moore the third. The third. This one's got that's his right. whole name. He's the Winfield third. Yeah, he always uh -huh. W. S. Moore the third. And that's Winfield Scott Moore the third right there. That is very very cool. So okay, how did you find these? Uh, you. I'm assuming you were not aware of these. I was not, uh, I, I think I, yeah, I, I think I ran across them as a kid, uh, you know, just being nosy going mm -hmm. through things and then just forgot about them until after my mother passed. And when uh, did your mom and dad get married? They got married in February of 1961. Okay. So, so all this would have happened even, so Scotty was famous. Oh yes. So that's uh, so what what I was getting out is if if they were married in fifty, <laughs> and she kept the letters, you have to go. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. but but it, that's not the case. So so I'm sure that she had the letters and then went. Wait a minute, he's famous. These are are valuable. These are going to be something special. Did you ever talk to your mom about these letters, or did you find them after she passed? After she passed. Uh, I knew she, like I said, uh, I knew she had them, but I didn't think anything of them. Uh, and I knew that they stayed in touch. They would talk uh, once or twice a year uh, on the phone at, at length, because I numerous times I asked her, you know, you know, who you, who, who's that? And you know, I've talked to Scotty, you know, talked to Scotty more. I was like, oh, you know, is any, no big deal. was anybody else in? You may not know this. Was anybody else in the family aware of the letters? Did she ever talk with anybody about it? No. Because you would think that she would have said, of course, you know, that was a long time ago. There's a possibility that she goes, she forgets. She you never. Know, they're in a shoebox somewhere and she goes, ah. No. But right. at some point she felt like they needed to be kept. Yes. You know. She oh, never. Okay, so here's here's another question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, she never mentioned them. Okay. Never mentioned them. Okay, so did she keep other things? Uh, is she the pack rat type where she kept everything or does she keep these specifically? Specifically, she was very highly organized yeah, as far as... Yeah, I mean, um, the way they look, they're yeah, pristine. Yeah, yes. um, and of course, since I've had them, they probably, you know, more wear and tear. But um, no, th these were, I think, special to her. So that, you know, um, I do not know, like I said, once he went into the Navy... And uh, and she married in 1953, her first marriage. Mm -hmm. um, so they went their different ways, you know, separate ways. So, but I do know, you know. But hold on now. Yeah. Okay, you just you just gave me a clue. Mm -hmm. So she was married in 53, though. Yes, she okay, was. Okay, so there's a clue. Yes. So she kept these letters, even though Scotty wasn't famous in 1953. That's right. Well, 53 was, she was Starlight Wranglers, and she wasn't in Memphis, though. She wouldn't have known that. She came to Memphis and... Where did she live in 53? Um, I think they went to uh, her husband. They were uh, in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay, so see, she wouldn't have known about the Starlight Wranglers. No. She wouldn't have known really about Scotty until, and other than word of mouth, mouth until... 55 at the earliest, right. most likely. Right. Yeah. yeah, of him becoming famous. Right. 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 Um, so did you ever 
Well, you didn't know. I was going to say, did she ever mention, you said you heard her talking on the phone. She just go, that was, Mom, who you talked to? Yeah, just it was just Scotty. You know, you know, they were just, they kept their friendship. So, did your dad know? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. He, he you know, he's, he had any, he, but he didn't know about this. I don't know. The love letters. I do not know. <laughs> I do but not But I don't know. think she kept these, you know, I mean, you could, you could speculate that she kept them for, uh, because they were love letters, they made her feel good about herself, whatever, you know. But I would think historical value would be more than anything. Because if she didn't keep them, how many, okay, let's back up and think about this. Mm -hmm. From a value standpoint, how many men have written ladies love letters that they completely destroyed, they're gone now? Absolutely. See, did you I get love letters at some point and oh, they're, and they're yes. completely destroyed? So it's very easy, John. I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw the jealousy. So the thing is, is these had to survive 